Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulce tu, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filive, a te suspiramus, gementes et lentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. Good morning, everyone, and welcome on this Tuesday in Holy Week. We've been enjoying the winter storm these last couple of days. You can use the word enjoyment in a neutral sense. Obviously, March that came in like a lamb is going to go out like a lion for us. But nonetheless, we enter into this holy time, preparing ourselves for the high feast days that are coming. To do so, I invite you to listen very carefully to the Gospel reading today, one of the parts of John chapter 13. I'll be talking about that in the homily. Please sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we pause to call to mind our need for God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant people. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. 
and I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. In my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen. Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side, so Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it, and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him, so Jesus said to him, what you were going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he had said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast or give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once. And it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen. Amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. sobering day. Here in this passage, you have Jesus foretelling both the betrayal of Judas and the denial of, Jesus, of, of Peter. Both Judas and Peter. 
Same, same scripture reading. It's important, though, that to understand this, we have to see the context of chapter 13 in John's Gospel. This is verses 21 to 33, and then we skip, and then 36 to 38. Right before this, the beginning of the 13th chapter of John's Gospel, is the foot washing. They're at the meal. They're at the dinner. They're all together. It's a tender, intimate moment, and then Jesus does this extraordinary gesture by getting down to, you know, taking off the outer garments and getting down on his knees and doing servant work. The teacher, the rabbi, the Lord is serving. And we're talking menial work. He's washing their feet. He says, look, I've given you an example. What I, teacher, rabbi, master, am doing now, you do for one another. He's teaching them to serve a a practical way to care for others, look after others. It's eminently physical in the gesture. It's meant to be a, a whole action of the body. He demonstrates what it means to serve without any thought of oneself. Then we have the betrayal of Judas foretold. The words are still hanging in the air. Jesus saying, I've given you this example. And now you have this notion of what's going on. One of you is going to betray me. And you think about, here's Jesus. He washed Judas' feet. He's he's on his knees looking up at Judas, and he can read Judas like a book. And here's Judas having his feet washed by Jesus. And the temptation is sitting right there. We know that Satan is tempting Judas. We hear that also at the beginning of the chapter. And, And here's Judas. We're told also that Judas is a thief. He steals out of this money bag. He's been tempted, he's been tempted, he's been tempted, and then he gives in. Do it, do it quickly. And it's night. Then we skip over, and then we hear this, how Jesus is foretelling that Peter's gonna deny him three times. And it's important that between Judas' departure and this issue with regards to Peter, there's another gap. We're missing something else. It's the great commandment. My children, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. That's how they'll know you're my disciples. By your love for one another. Jesus teaches service. The betrayal of Judas. Jesus teaches love. The denial of Peter. And lest we paint too dark a picture that here's Judas. He's a hot mess. Here's Peter. He just keeps putting his foot in his mouth. I'll I'll die for you. No, you won't, Peter. Not yet. You're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times. Here's here's the issue, Peter. You're going to mess up. Jesus teaches. There's a blessing by God. And immediately a temptation follows. Folks, this is the spiritual battle. And we see this over and over again. God's grace comes into the world. God's goodness comes into the world. A healing, a miracle, a teaching, a sign of repentance, a moment of grace. And in those moments where God shines, Satan continues to try to undermine it. To note that Satan was right there in the Last Supper. Right there during the foot washing. Tempting and tempting and tempting. The spiritual battle that we see here played out with Judas and Peter is played out for all of us. And it's critical that, lest we put these guys in black hats, we remember that the very reason why Jesus will die on that cross is because all of us sin and fall short of God's grace, and we need God's help. That all of us stand in need of the mercy of Christ to help us when we're a hot mess. To help us when the things we say and the things we do are not worthy of heaven. What we see here is a very dark day in the lives of those apostles. Judas walking out in the darkness, completely consumed. Peter, who's boasting one moment and being looked right in the eye by Jesus to say, look, this is what's going to go down. For Judas, a temptation for greed, money, for Peter, fear, 
For us, it might be whatever temptation is our particular soft target. We're all tempted. We're all tempted uniquely. But may we today, in the light of this passage, have an honest look within our hearts to where we are tempted, where we are particularly prone to be able to take that and set that before the altar, set that before a crucifix, and say, Lord, help me with this. Help me to face this particular sin, this particular temptation, this particular trial. Lord, you came into this world that we might have life and hope. And so I lay this before you, that you will give me the grace and strength I need so that I will continue to resist the temptations of this world and follow you. That I will continue to turn away from sin and be faithful to your love. God bless you all. We pray this day for the church, that around the world Christians everywhere will turn away from sin and enter more deeply into the love and mystery of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. I want to pray for all who are traveling and working outside with this latest winter storm. People have to learn how to drive all over again, and so we pray for safety on the roads. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all who are entering into the church on this Easter vigil that all of those who are configuring their hearts and lives to Christ will grow in grace and mercy, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Susan Wesley, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line. And for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, Pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed, be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those among the living, for whom we now pray. Remember all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. First, a reminder of the, the liturgies for the sacred triduum, the three holy days. On Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper here at the Cathedral, celebrated by all of the parishes in our cluster of churches, will be at 7 p.m. on Thursday. On Good Friday, the Passion of the Lord will be celebrated here at the Cathedral at 12.30 in the afternoon. Those two liturgies especially are for the entire cluster. The Easter Vigil here at the Cathedral will be at 8.30 on Holy Saturday. And then the Easter Sunday Masses are identical to any Sunday, with one exception, that St. William Church has Mass at 10.30 on Easter Sunday. On Friday, Good Friday, is the last and final fish fry at St. Anthony Church for this Lenten season. Certainly want to invite folks to go. And especially while all of these liturgies will be live streamed, I want to personally invite people to come out Come out for sacred triduum, come for Easter, come in person, come to receive Jesus in the sacrament of the altar. Come and pray with your brothers and sisters. Days like today when the weather's inclement and schools are closed, I'm glad we live stream. For people who just would like to come to church, but it's not safe to get out. I'm honored to offer the live stream masses 
for anyone who really is homebound or because of shift work, they can't get to church. That's why we do this. But if you can come, what a beautiful time to come to church, to encounter the Lord, to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, to be together in faith and hope. Come join us at the table. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great day.